Hi, my name is Jamie Schiffer, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the Center for Aerosol Impacts on Climate and the Environment, working in the lab of Dr. Romeo Amaro, and I am excited to talk to you about molecular dynamic simulations. This video is the first of a series of four, and in this video we'll talk about some background and history of molecular dynamic simulations. So the first question is, why perform molecular dynamic simulations? And the answer is, if you're interested in the atomic level dynamics of molecular systems, especially if the dynamics is occurring on the picosecond to millisecond timescales. So why would you be interested in something like that? Well, for our purposes, the main reason is that on this timescale, we're able to sample different pockets opening and closing on protein surfaces that could be druggable. So this is something that other experimental and computational methods might not be able to do as well, especially experimental. It's difficult to sample picosecond and nanosecond motions on an atomic level for an entire protein. Okay, so enough about that. Where did molecular dynamics start? How did this field come about? Well, about 25 years ago, the state of the art was performing molecular dynamics trajectories of a 10,000 atom protein on a 12 CPU computer. And over time, this, uh, our capabilities have really increased. So it is very typical nowadays to perform much longer trajectories on much bigger systems. In fact, in this year, we were able, or it was recently published, um, an envelope virus simulation of 160 million atom system at hundreds of microseconds. So that's a lot of data. And the reason why we're able to do this is because over the past 25 years, there's been an increase in computing power and resources. So what does a virus simulation look like? Well, here is an example of it. All of the different colors are different proteins, not atoms, but proteins. And the whole sphere is one virus particle. So we're spinning around so you can get a three-dimensional view of what a virus looks like. And then we can zoom in to the membrane go through the membrane and look at all the proteins sticking in and out. All of the spheres represent different atoms here. And what you can see is that there is an incredible amount of information that be, can be gained from knowing the atomic level positions of all, knowing the positions of all the atoms of your protein through time. So we're only able to perform simulations and analyze these large scale simulations with increases in GPU computing and supercomputers like Blue Waters, as well as institutes created to enable researchers to figure out new methods for analyzing these huge trajectories, like with Mole SSI. And you might ask, who does these simulations? And the answer, anybody. So here's a picture of high school students that perform molecular dynamic simulations during the summer in the Amaro lab. So everyone from high school students learning from the first time to full professors at R01 universities can perform molecular dynamic simulations and get some really interesting results and insight into how pockets form on the surface of proteins and even find druggable pockets for drug discovery efforts. Okay, so a little bit about the background about why molecular dynamics is so great at these timescales is because a lot of protein dynamics happen at these timescales that, mole that molecular dynamics can sample. So, for example, hydrogen bond transfer, not something we can sample, but it happens at the picosecond timescale. What we are mostly looking at with molecular dynamics is side chain rotations, rotational diffusion, even unfolding, ligand binding, and allosteric regulation which at the center there is showing the different time scales. So it ranges from 10 to the minus 12 or a picosecond all the way up to 10 to the zero or a second. And we are right around here where this star is. We're almost at the second time regime. We've gotten to the milliseconds. And what this allows us to do is sample things like how proteins bind with one another as shown in this molecular dynamics trajectory on the right. So what does a molecular dynamics simulation look like? Well, you start with a box and you fill it up with lots of different molecules that you're interested in. So for example, here there's a box with dimensions X, Y, and Z, and inside there is a bilayer or two layers of lipids, and then the protein shown in purple is lipase, and the lipids are shown in cyan and in red as sticks. And then you also fill the box up with water and salt, so you make a system in a box. And what you have to specify is what the box sizes are, and that will help you also specify how many atoms you have. 
the bigger the box, the more atoms, the more computation you'll have to perform. But what's really cool about molecular dynamics is that it's a little bit like the game Snake that was on all the cell phones in the 90s and early 2000s, where you could ch press up and down and your snake would move left and right. And if your snake moved out of your cell phone screen, it would come in the other side. Well, the atoms in a molecular dynamic simulation do the same thing. So if an atom leaves through the YZ face on the right, it will enter back into the box on the YZ face on the left. You also have to choose things and be really careful to choose appropriate ensembles, so whether you keep the pressure or the volume constant. So basically NTP stands for the number of atoms constant, the temperature constant, and the pressure constant. An NVT ensemble is the number of atoms present, the volume is constant, and the temperature is constant. There's also a slew of simulation engines and force fields that can be used to simulate protein wiggling and jiggling through time. And it's important to do analysis and background research on what the best simulation engines and force fields are for you because there's a lot of different options. So if you're interested in looking more into the different options on this last slide is a list of resources for best practices in molecular dynamics simulations. And with that, I will leave you to it. Thank you for listening and look forward to the next lecture, which is talking about how molecular dynamics moves atoms through time. This is Jamie signing off.